Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the Shop. We're going to sharpen up our old, it's called a Carpenter Hatchet or Axe. I've seen it listed in old stuff as a flooring axe. You can pull your nails, it's got the waffle type head over here. We'll show up in detail. It's made by Plum. Uh, we're sharpening this with our file. I'm just going to do a little bit. And I know I'm dragging my file backwards, but I'm lightly doing this. It's kind of hard. I was I kind of at the wrong side. I was standing around this end, so this is just for demonstration. I want to show you. See all the nice filings I'm getting, all the stuff off it. Okay, you can't do that with other hatches. We're going to talk about them, our other new stuff. So you can't do that stuff. It's too hard to steal. Even my other one's supposed to be hard steel, but we will take a picture of those. Uh, there's really no edge here. This was used for killing wood, so I just cleaned it up. I have a video on this somewhere. I put new epoxy here, uh, re put a wedge in the top. Uh, I'll take a picture, probably close up. I put super glue where the wood was cracked. So I totally redid this. I got the head was painted red, uh, like a fireman on it or something. And this was so grungy that if you look at the bottom of that, that's how greasy it was. So I had sanded it down lightly and put some oil on it. I have used it with dirty gloves. But I want a axe, but I, if I go camping, I want to cut up any logs, like the notch, to make like shelters and stuff. And this is really good for that. I mean, it's big, you can tell. I'll measure it at the bench there. So enough of that. I just wanted to show you how easy I could sharpen this type of old steel. And we'll go over to the bench and we'll discuss the that newer modern stuff that you have to use a grinder on. So stay tuned. Okay, back in the easy chair. <laughs> Might as well show this. I don't know if it'll show up that far away, but see that sappy stuff that gets in there? That's how nasty these will be. I may paint this bottle uh, from burning incense. Let's slide a little bit closer. See how nasty that gets? So you could always paint a bottle where you don't see this. They do get warm with the incense, but you can put your hand on it, so it's not going to burn the paint off. So Enough of that. Okay, back to this. I don't know how good this will show up. Just, just a file edge. That's all I'm going to do. I want to be able to use this just file. I don't want to have to take the hockey puck stone or anything. That, that's what I call it, that round stone. I want to be able to use this, just take a file with me and touch it up. So I'll try to get a close-up of that. I cannot take the exact angle. I just guess I'm close to 25 degrees, 30, 25 for hatchets, axes, and stuff. It's the angle I like just by doing it. I kind of just do it. I'm used to doing it over the years since I was a kid, like on a hatchet or an axe. That, you know, you just get to what you like. But really nice old one, though. Like I said, I'll try to snap a picture of that. This has been super glued. Uh, this was pried up and had, like, toothpicks. A little piece of wood, so I pried this open when the, head, when the head was all loose. I never did take the head all the way off this, if I remember right. I just tightened it up. I pried this out and put uh, super glue in there, a whole bunch. So I wanted to preserve the original handle. But made by Plum. They made good tools. Uh, I have a double bladed axe that belonged to my dad, that is made by Plum. So. That probably was who knows how old, but I don't know if you can see the end there, so I can get a picture. re that after I got them put the stuff in there, painted it black, got the waffle head, so it's really nice. Uh, measurement. I always do that, don't have a tape measure ready. By golly, this thing is about 17 and a half inches long. There's 17 and a half inches. Not quite 18 inches. Uh, just for anybody who wants to know, we'll do this measurement. It's probably about six and a half. And then this part, the cutting edge, is a nice, healthy three and a half. Put the glare on the camera. There you go. Okay. So this is really nice for chopping wood. I, I went out and played with it a little bit when I first cleaned it up. So I can chop notches in a 
in greenwood especially i can chop notches and stuff i want to make a shelter or something which i still plan on finding where i can do that on someone's property uh using their trees and make like a little fort or shelter to do videos at so enough of that okay we'll get that out of the way i don't want this video to be too long this is that whatever i'm not even gonna look it up they, they call it like the 13 CR or whatever. It's that stainless steel, whatever, modern metal. You will not sharpen this with a file. I'm not even going to show it on there. I did try to take the file list, and what happens if you think you're starting to get an edge, it just crumbles and falls off. Can you get like a little fine edge? It just crumbles away. So you have to sharpen it with a, like with my little uh, sharpener with the belt on it. But I did attempt to kind of change the profile on this. This is going to go probably inside of my backpack if I can't tie it on the outside. Uh, carrying this and trying to get this in here is almost ridiculous. The only complaint I had about this little thing is you're seeing me fumble with it. you got to fold it all the way out like this. See, it kind of takes a knack. So you're pulling this way back here. But once it's on there, when it's on a backpack or something, like I said, if I tie it on a backpack, I don't want to be all day long trying to hold that back. And, of course, that would be held down and wouldn't flip up. So, so, there. I guess you just have to learn it. There you go for that. Okay. Now, the tomahawk. Uh, I tried filing on this, and I've got a good file. No luck at all. I mean, all it did was skate on. It was like a really hardened piece of steel. Like when you harden steel, tool steel, it would not do nothing to it. Uh, I even went aggressive on it because I figured if I screwed up all this, take it back to my belt, little belt grinder thing. But this is more for destruction and kindling. It does not have to be razor sharp. This is for just ripping up stuff, splitting wood, uh, destroying things. So enough of that. Okay, we'll pause. We want to show you a little what we're going to do on our monocular, which is in the video. We're going to super glue a part on it where the threads came off it. Uh, so that's coming up next. And that might be it for today. We'll see how long a video of this is total. Okay, back to the monocular. Uh, I didn't show that, but this piece of screws there, you put your lanyard strap, you unscrew it when you put it on the tripod. It's kind of self explanatory. I'm sure most people figure it out, but. Uh, I have a video on this. It just actually should be before this video. Uh, so enough of showing that. What we're going to do is I'm going to hold these instructions up. If you want to, if you want to read whatever's on them, uh, you can always pause. So we'll we'll pause it right there. Then we'll pause it here. I did learn though if you if you have if I take my glass off and unscrew this, I can kind of fit this against your. Uh, eyebrow kind of fit it in your eye socket to kind of steady it so it does kind of have an advantage of, of unscrewing this out but like I said it does make your image a little smaller then we'll stop on this side like this says clockwise for a close shot counterclockwise for distance view so like I said it does zoom I mean people people's idea of zoom is different but yes if you want to look at something close you got to really really turn the wheel and fo refocus it so you're actually moving that lens in inside out. i even look down at my flashlight you're moving that back lens in and out quite a ways too we'll pause right here that's mostly the dust caps okay enough of that uh this piece is what we're after let's take this off We'll just put everything in the box. What I might do is this might stay in the car when we're going to use it with the cell phone camera. That just it's not a one in my backpack or nothing. This thing it only screws in one way. It has an inset. Okay. Well, when I had it on the monocular, I went like this. I, I kind of pulled on it and I kind of popped it off there. It only goes on one way. See how that's made? That's inset. Inset. You can do that. Inset. And we'll sit incense. Oh well, it's Sunday. I can mess up. I don't have to edit. We're all just goofing off in the shop on the Sunday. That's what I like about these videos. I can just ramble on. Uh, sorry if you're all that bored that you hunt for my video because there ain't really nothing else to do. We don't know how we're going to super glue this. You can see how it's inset? 
in set. I N S E T. You can do this. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. I don't know how I'm going to glue this. You know, if you put super glue on there, it's going to go on there really, really fast. Uh, I thought about maybe trying to get a drop down there. We don't want to mess this hole up. That's where you look through with your camera. So we're thinking, how are we going to glue this? And then screw it on real quick. So I think we're just going to get brave. We're going to put a little super glue on here. We're going to get it for really fast. We're probably going to practice screwing it on there. See me fumbling. And, and, and go like that because I want it to lock on there. If that don't work, we're going back and plastic weld this or something. Because we don't need to put the wife's expensive Galaxy phone, 7 or 8, I think it's a 7. We don't put our expensive phone on there. This grips the rubber of the monocular, which I should have left. Oh, here it is. This grips the rubber on this really good. I mean, you put that on there, and that, that's on there. It's really, really good. And have this thing come loose. I mean, sure, the whole thing turns, but you're turning this part, see? So, even if I held this, I mean, that's, that's on there pretty good. That's pretty grippy. I mean, it takes a little bit of work to get that to move. So, I'm happy. If this is the part I'm worried about. We're going to be trying to pull it off out there in the field. This is going to pop off. It's going to crack the thread. So, uh, we'll come back and let you know how we fix this. And I think that's about it for this week. Uh, it's kind of snowy outside. Uh, it is about 30 degrees. It's supposed to only get down in the teens overnight and get in the middle 30s. Uh, clear till like for a week from now. Today's Saturday, actually, I make this, so up to Thursday, Friday, we're supposed to have some nice weather, no below zero stuff, so we'll come back and tell you what I did to fix this. Super glue or whatever I did. Uh, I know you could probably drill a little hole and put a little pin in there, like epoxy some couple little pins or something. Uh, we're probably going to try to glue it for the first step, so stay tuned, and we'll be back and explain to what we did to fix this. Okay, we just super glued it. We put some in the threads of the bracket and then screw this in real fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have let it set for about five minutes. And I torqued on it pretty good. I don't think it's coming loose. I did take a picture of this, what this looks like. So it has that inset. So I'm in trouble that word inset. Uh, I've had this glue sitting around about a month. Now, when I use this glue, when I put a drop, I turn it up immediately and I kind of squeeze backwards like this so the glue kind of sucks in. And then I'll wipe the tip off, maybe with a little alcohol swab or alcohol on the Kleenex. I screw the lid on and I'll store it this direction on my shelf. And I've had good luck with these little tubes of cheap glue. Oh, it's cheap. But for the cost of it, if you screw up a tube, oh well, you can buy four tubes for a couple bucks. But I've had good luck. This has probably been sitting around over a month since the last time I used it. You can see how many times I've used it by looking at the tube. So, that'll show you there, you know. Well, he's lying. Well, you can tell how much I've used that where I've squeezed it. Like I said, I kind of go the opposite. If I squeeze it in, I'm not going to tip it up. If I squeeze it this way, I'll go back and try to uh, kind of like push it like this so it kind of lets the glue run down so just a little tip on the super glue good stuff this stuff is made the old-fashioned way it will glue your fingers immediately I have no acetone nail polish remover I have grabbed rubbing alcohol and got lucky to get my fingers apart so this is the formula I like this seems to be like old-style super glue that will definitely stick your fingers together so we'll leave you some pictures of everything and thanks for watching this week. Oop, don't back off. Once you start filming in Telemacro, it kind of stays there. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.